All right, 12 News is everywhere A to Z, and this week we've been checking out the cool people and places in the Southwest Valley. So today we are headed to Buckeye, the westernmost suburb in the metro area and one of the fastest growing cities in the country, actually. Yeah, pretty impressive. Did you know it's Main Street has unique attractions that have drawn people from all over for decades? Team Tall's Crystal Henderson shows us. Buckeye became a town in 1888, and in the early 1900s, this was the first hotel to go up. Today, the San Linda Hotel still stands, and the history of Buckeye is still alive in its buildings, community, and celebrations. There's photo after photo of this city's rich history, images of canals and cotton, the first draw to downtown Buckeye, and festivals down Main Street, now called Buckeye Days. And look at that, you'll even still find horse ties on the sidewalk. But there's something else that has cameras clicking year round. A 22 foot statue that's become a roadside attraction like none other. My kids, myself, we like just looking at him. This is Hobo Joe. He appears in Weird Arizona. He's on a lot of websites. And of course, he has his own Facebook page. You'll find many hymns in Buckeye shops on t-shirts. But who is he? You might remember him from an old coffee shop with his namesake. They created this whole history about him, this fake persona, and how he traveled around, and he is a connoisseur of fine food. And so he just became this mythical person for this coffee shop chain that was very popular in the 50s and 60s here in Arizona. He was even dreamed up by a Disney designer, but it's been no fairy tale for this hobo. Part of the folklore or the gossip and the story about it is that the group of men that own the restaurant, uh, Hobo Joe, that contracted to have these large statues made, had some sort of tenuous uh, connection to organized crime, and that was part of the problem. The statue's creator didn't get paid, so he brought it to Buckeye to put in storage behind a meatpacking plant. And later, it was put up for all eyes to behold. That's where he's been standing tall since 1989, until now. The property that proudly showcased this man of mystery went into foreclosure, so the Main Street Coalition bought him, but he needs some help. So we put him into hobo rehab, and since that time we've been raising money to do the work that needs to be done. He's fiberglass, he was painted in 1988 or 1989. So he's had some bumps along the way. And for his new home? Currently we're standing in an empty parking lot behind Cafe 2535 and Liquor Corral. And this is the ultimate home of Hobo Joe. Born and raised in Buckeye, the owner of the lot felt he had to give the hobo a home. Well, it's important to me to give back to the, to the, to the community and the people that made me who I am. It was, uh, it was a no-brainer for me. He also restored this 1920s building that used to be a bar, but now a great place to get a burger. And another thing you don't see every day, trash can art. They tease me about my trash can fetish. Beautifying Buckeye with less litter and another reason to bust out the camera. People stop to take photos with them and they're used, you know, because we do have a lot of trash in them. We have plans to do them all along all the intersections on Main Street. 12 News is everything Arizona and we're taking you everywhere from A to Z. In Buckeye, I'm Crystal Henderson. <laughs> wow, cool place. it is. Who knew Buckeye had so much history right. there? And trash. Yeah, and trash and art. Trash yeah. too. <laughs> Trashy art, right? Trashy art. There we go. All right, thanks, guys. Well.